Uh, just obviously on the ASX releases, the, the uh, disclosures, and uh, just move straight into where our projects are. So this, this sort of map highlights where our assets are, and predominantly in Queensland. And our, our major focus over the last three years has been to really consolidate assets around our Mount Coolin asset in the Drummond Basin, and then slowly divest uh, some assets uh, that, that we had in the portfolio uh, to focus on the Drummond Basin. So we'll talk about you know, our 100% owned uh, projects at Twin Hills and, and Yandan. We'll talk a little bit about the, the resource base that we've got, about 1.84 million ounces of, of gold in, in the projects. Uh, we'll talk about you know, where, where we're focusing our energy on in terms of what, what we're looking for next, which is obviously higher grade uh, near surface material and higher grade under, underground resources. Uh, you know, what are some of the catalysts for GBM? Obviously, as we build our resource base, uh, you know, we're certainly attracting the interest of some of the tier one uh, producers, and, and that's evidenced by Newcrest coming in on, on our Mount Coolin joint venture, which I'll talk about. At the moment, obviously, the gold sector's pretty soft, and we've got a very low EV per ounce, uh, you know, less than $10 an ounce. So there's obviously some re-rating potential there from, from, from the market. So what are we trying to do in the Drummond Basin? We, we spent a lot of time consolidating a large tenement package, you know, the basin, and, and then obviously we can't do all the, all the funding with the market the way it is, so we brought in Newcrest. So I'll talk in a minute on that. We're still divesting assets. We've, we've divested about $9 million worth of assets over the last three years. So, so we, we, we recognise a bit like Jake said, we have assets in the portfolio. We're trying to consolidate a, a bigger footprint in the Drummond Basin and some assets just don't fit with our, our sort of longer term view. So some of these assets at White Dam, uh, the Mount Morgan copper gold exploration uh, targets we've got around the old Mount Morgan mine, and, and our joint venture with, with the Japanese in Cloncurry, it's not core, but at the moment it's fully funded. So just why are we in the Drummond Basin? Like this, this district was really under, underexplored over the last 30 years, and, and it came about with um, Peter Mullins and Steve Nano got involved with myself in 2019. As Jake mentioned, or someone else mentioned, the, the new mod operation, Cerro Negro in, in Santa Cruz in Argentina. MIM had that, it went from half a million ounces to seven million ounces, and they're producing, you know, expanding to half a million ounces a year. This basin has the same, you know, district scale uh, opportunities. It's an epithermal district, very underexplored. Uh, Jake's uh, early stage company, Conquest, owned the uh, and the Bajingo mine and, and the Twin Hills asset, uh, which were then later sold as, as Evolution grew. And we acquired the uh, Twin Hills asset last year. So we love the basin, it's very prospective. We've already got two million ounces almost in, in resources. We've got a great JV partner with Newcrest on the eastern ground there in blue. And, and I'll just talk about that. So where we come from, uh, when I started, we, we had about 300,000 ounces through a com combination of acquisitions of Yandan and, and Twin Hills and exploration success, we've built that to, to about 1.8 million ounces. Uh, one of the key things that's, that's changed in our thinking is, is the Twin Hills district uh, was originally looked at as, as really high grade ore that could be trucked up to Pajingo. Now we're starting to see you know, a resource there that's about a million ounces. Uh, it's clearly got some open pit potential and, and the resources, you know, a lot bigger in that area. Where, we, where we're obviously targeting, we want to keep growing, um, and there's a lot of high-grade ounces there if you raise the cutoff grade. So obviously, depending on the gold price and, and where the market's heading, we've got optionality there on, on head grade as well. So Newcrest, uh, last year, uh, we realised, like the market was obviously, at the golf conference here last year, it was pretty, pretty soft. You know, the market was uh, sort of heading down. Uh, we realised we couldn't do every, everything. We'd secured this big land package, very prospective, lots of targets, and we decided to, um, to start to open up discussions. Newcrest showed interest in, in Twin Hills and our, our Mount Coolan ground. Um, they probably wanted to do a joint venture on Twin Hills, but you know, we only just acquired it in early, early uh, January 2022. So we did a farm in with them, $25 million farm in for a 75% uh, interest in that project. Uh, they're hitting the ground uh, really hard at the moment. They, they've been spending um, about a million bucks a month the last few months uh, getting stuck into the groundwork uh, and soil sampling IP. They're basically flying the entire tenement package with uh, Aramags and, and um, 
radiometrics. So they're getting, getting stuck into it. What are they uh, doing? So the, the IP, we did IP in 2020 between Glen Eva and Eastern Silicious where there's resources. Uh, they're basically extending this IP uh, survey line all the way up to Eugenia, which is about 16 kilometres. Uh, they're doing soils along those IP lines and then uh, they'll, they'll start the next trend here from Verbena Centre up to Koala. So a small resource base of sort of 300,000 ounces in that tenement package. Why is Newcrest there? Well, they're not there to find another 300,000. I mean, they're there because they want to find something big. So, so we're really excited about obviously them funding that activity. We, we, we can't do it all. Um, and uh, the key activities will be uh, getting the remaining assays back from these soils, processing the geophysics, and then starting drilling in the back end of this year, uh, initially on this trend. So in the Twin Hills district, as I say, we acquired this off Minjar in, in 2021. Um, we got straight into drilling 309 and a, and a whole, couple of holes in Lone Sister last year. Got some great results. Um, and uh, again, in a soft market, didn't get rewarded for that. We've spent a little bit of time the last sort of six or seven months really looking at all the regional stuff and, and just how much additional prospectivity there is in the regional area. And we're really excited about some of the targets that, that that's turning up. Particularly a couple of areas, um, there's some IP anomalies, which I'll show on the next slide, south of 309, where we've got half a million ounces. And then this massive soil anomaly around Twin uh, Lone Sister, where we've got half a million ounces. So really excited about the prospectivity in, in this area and, and the extensions of, of 309. And we're talking about, you know, this is not low-grade ore, this is high-grade ore. I mean, Lone Sister, 140 metres at nearly 10 grams. It's a very continuous rhyolite uh, mineralised zone. The 309 deposits are more like a breccia, but again, high-grade zones and, and fairly uh, continuous um, mineralised zones. Lends itself an open pitable resource. And as I say, that, that's probably where the thinking change is, is smaller underground high grade that could be trucked up to Bajingo was what this project was really looked at previously. So the exciting things uh, just southeast of um, 309 heading towards the Lone Sister trend are these uh, resistivity targets. So this is the 309 deposit, which is around, around about half a million ounces in resource at the moment. It's open in a number of directions. We've got these two resistivity highs, uh, you know, a few kilometres each to the southeast. This is a surface plan showing the soil geochemistry above those res resistivity anomalies. That's a section. A um, little bit of shallow drilling here. Uh, clearly, these things haven't been tested. As I say, the previous owners were looking for shallower, high-grade, open pitable stuff that they could truck up to Bajingo. Really exciting target here. So this is the 309 deposit. I'll, I'll flick through these next two uh, fairly quickly. We did some pit optimization work in, in, um, in January just to start to get a sense of where the pit might want to push. And uh, we can see, sort of see the shapes of where the pit might want to push. And these are obviously underground resources. Um, and that'll help inform where to drill from, you know, which directions to come in and, and how we uh, attack the sort of geological potential. Same thing with Lone Sister, did some pit optimization, some really high grade zones here that the pit wants to chase down to and then you know, further down, down plunge to the north, a potential for this deposit. Very exciting, you know, these are pretty close to uh, drill ready in terms of our priority uh, drilling phase would be the down plunge extension of Lone Sister as our next field program uh, advances. So further north in the Yandan package, um, this is where the Yandan, the old Ross Mining Yandan mine was, and, and there's a residual resource there of about 450,000 ounces, of which there's a high grade resource of a couple hundred thousand ounces at nearly six grams. We've got a small resource at Illamartha, but, but again, we've been going back and looking at all the regional soils and regional drilling and, and just looking at the targets. And, and we found a couple of new things here that look very interesting that have probably been um, not advanced enough. So once we drilled uh, Yandan a, a couple of years ago, we uh, started to understand the geology better. Um, everyone thought uh, below this fault was basement rock. Uh, the work that uh, Mark and the team, at, uh, our geologists, have, have done, have, have really understood the geology here. And what's clear is there is mineralisation below this fault. Uh, and this looks like it's a reverse fault. And there's clearly something down here. Now, how far that slip is, we don't know. But there's certainly a high grade 
uh, potential feeder structure down there that, that, that needs to be tested. Again, exciting target, probably one a little bit less of a priority for us because it's deeper and, and, and probably a little bit more risky. But certainly when you've got five gram, six gram dirt here, a couple of hundred thousand ounces, you know, another couple of hundred thousand or a million ounces at five or six grams is, is certainly an interesting target. So I won't cover that. Illamartha, another big uh, thing to the south. Uh, that's the same scale as Yandan. This is the sort of silicification zone uh, at that Illamartha deposit. Very poorly explored, small resource here. Uh, again, uh, a little bit of geophysics and then we'll probably do some uh, drilling on this target. These are the couple of things I mentioned before. So this is Yandan here and then to the, to the west here. It wasn't our, our main focus, looking at uh, probably these intrusive related gold systems. But this is old soil geochemistry on these um, magnetic lows that are clearly intrusive bodies. Uh, a bit like Mount Lation, Mount Wright. Uh, these things are pipe-like structures that could be um, reasonably well, well, well mineralized. Um, we've really only just started to unpick that and, and, uh, and, and get ahead around the next steps there, but very exciting targets. So we're, we've got too many targets and it's really about how we fund and, and bring partners in to, to work on, on the ground that we've got. So just quickly on our other two projects, so we've got a joint venture with JX or Nippon Mining Australia, JX Metals, uh, just north of Ernest Henry, so Jake mentioned, obviously the Ernest Henry mine here. We've got tenements uh, to the north of Ernest Henry. We did a, we did a, a single hole in a, in a target just north of Ernest Henry um, in April, uh, found a good uh, struck geological uh, package there and some weak mineralisation and we'll be going back uh, in the next couple of months and doing a, a larger drill program, uh, maybe seven to ten holes through the cover and in, into the uh, prospective sequence. So in this part of the world, as, as um, Mike mentioned and others, you know, with Ernest Henry Mill there being hungry for feed, even if we find a small deposit here, it's something that you could get into production pretty quickly. The other asset we've got, which is another one that obviously we're divesting, is our small operation in, in South Australia. It's a producing gold uh, heap leach operation. Uh, we're making a small bit of uh, cash flow out of, out of the gold that we're recovering from the, the existing heap. There's, there's remaining about 100,000 ounces of resources in, in these two, under these pits in this unmined deposit. Um, we're progressing all the development studies and, and opportunities, obviously, as the gold price rises, the opportunity there to, to get back into another mining campaign looks more and more attractive. Uh, it's probably not something we're going to progress, but, but it, we're sort of positioning the asset for sale. And, uh, and we've also done uh, some work with the regional owner of the Porsche project to the north to, to toll some ore to, to build revenue in the short term. So again, it's, a, it's, it's not a core asset for us long term. Uh, in the current market with uh, funding and uh, equity hard to come by, if we can get this, if we can squeeze this back into the black uh, substantially, then uh, you know, it might, uh, again, uh, build a bit of a bridge in the short term while the equity markets are soft. So just a quick wrap up, what have we got? Um, so cash and receivables, we've got uh, just over $2 million. Uh, we've got about a million, $1.1 million in script from earlier asset sales we did last year and the year before. Um, so we are, as I say, uh, slowly selling assets. We're doing it in an orderly way. We got a, we got a convertible note facility, which most people don't like last year, but you know, we repaid two and a half million dollars after we sold our mom's, remaining Malmesbury interest to, to Novo. And uh, as we do an orderly disposal of assets, we'll, we'll continue to repay that loan. What's, what's coming up, um, you know, the key thing for us is, you know, in the short term, while we're probably doing a little bit work, less work on the ground, we've got two JV partners that are spending, you know, in the, in the order of our market capitalisation in, in calendar 23 on, on expiration. So, so we're leveraging other people's money and, and protecting our own resources. And basically two programs of drilling at the two J joint ventures and, uh, and some further asset development news, you know, in the coming months. As I said, uh, as uh, Lucy said, we've got a, a guess the sort of gold grade of a, of a bit of drill core from Lone Sister. So come to booth 25 and, and have a crack at uh, guessing the grade and you might win a, a gold coin uh, tonight. Thanks for your time. <laughs>